Hi everyone, and welcome to Tapping Your Creativity in my studio. Um, today we have incredible guest artist, uh, Buddy LaHood, and <clears throat> I can't wait to introduce you um, to Buddy. He's an incredible guy. Um, you will know why, and um, he will join us any minute now. He is an artist from Georgia. Oh, there we are. Hello, everybody. Welcome. How are you? I am so good. Welcome, welcome. We are so <clears throat> excited to have you in, um, in my studio today. Well, I'm very excited to be with you. Wow, where are you? You're beautiful. What, tell me about um, who you are. What's your name? Where are you from? I'm Buddy LaHood. I'm from Brooks County, Georgia, which is right outside of Valdosta, Georgia, about 18 miles from the Florida line. So it's real beautiful and warm here today. Wow, it looks beautiful behind you. I'm going to come in my studio. My grandson's in here playing the piano. He is one of my main sources of inspiration. Oh, aren't turn... you lucky? I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see. Him. Okay. Wow. Hey, Brown. How are you? I am so good. This is what an entry for today's episode. This is amazing. So this is your studio, buddy. This is incredible. Yeah, I have a beautiful studio. I'm very blessed. I made it a little bit too beautiful because I don't have enough, <laughs> enough wall space to hang my paint. Yes. May I speak to Brown place. for a minute? I want to see what he's doing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brown. That was beautiful. Tell me, who, who are you? I am Brown LaHood. I am uh, 15 years old, and uh, I love to play the piano, so thank you for having me. <laughs> wow, you are, you are going to be a rock star in a couple years here. You are so talented. It's so great for you to join us today, and quite the inspiration for your grandfather to have you. Well, it's, thank it's, you. It's really incredible. Do you want yeah. to share how it is to be in the studio with your grandfather? Well, yeah. Uh, you know, there's something about just coming in here with him painting and just the freedom, you know, it creates this atmosphere of just creativity and there's no rules and we love it. So, Well, Very thank you so fun. much for, for joining us today and for helping us do this interview with your incredible grandfather. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you, Miss Sandra. And I just want to say, um, you know, this isn't my gift. It's uh, it's God's that He's freely given to me. So, very thankful and just all the glory to Him. So, appreciate it. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. You're a gift yourself. So, it's so good. now you're gonna help us, Brown. We're gonna give um, uh, the we're gonna switch you around, I guess. All right. <laughs> so. Here we go. There we go. Oh my gosh, you are so blessed to have your grandson giving you all this inspiration. This is amazing. I am, and I have uh, 15 grandchildren. They're in and out of here. Little oh, girls right. are dancing. And it's a, we have just a ball in here, so I'm very That's blessed. That's incredible, buddy. So um, tell us a little bit about what kind of art do you do? Well, I do a little bit of a lot of different things, but my what I like to do mostly is abstract art. I used to paint uh, roosters and chickens and bulls and cows, things like that. <clears throat> because mainly because they were it was fun to do that, but people bought them. You know, they just buy those up by hotcakes. But you can only paint so many roosters and chickens and cows till you get tired of it. So <clears throat> abstract is just completely freeing to me 
because uh, when I start a paint, I have no idea what, what I'm going to paint. I just start putting paint on the canvas or marks with a piece of charcoal or glue some paper on there and see what happens. And just follow the paint wherever it leads me. So when did you start painting, buddy? When, when did you actually start uh, your journey? Well, 50, more than 50 years ago when I first started college, I was clucking out of college because I was having too much fun. And so I wanted to get my grade point average up. So I thought, well, I need to take something easy to get my grade point average up. I'm going to take art. I thought that would be easy. So I took a introduction to art course and the teacher was so fantastic. He just made me fall in love with art. So I majored in art for a couple of years, but I didn't graduate. I started a business and uh, you know quit. And then I didn't do anything with my art for about 20 years. Wow. And when my dog, my oldest daughter got married, we were, she got married at the house. So we were fixing the house up and I needed a painting over the mantel. So the night before she got married, I took out, I had some old house paint and <laughs> painted a thing of some grapefruits. And it turned out good. And that's when I started painting again. So that's been about 24 years ago. And I've been painting ever since. So can you show us a little bit of the artwork that you have on your walls and talk to us a little bit about that? Well, you know, I talked to you yesterday getting ready for this. <clears throat> and so you inspired me. Oh, and what really inspired me, I was watching the, the video of Amy that you did last. Uh, yes. Yes. And I could only see the first part of the video. It cut off for some reason, but I saw a big, a tall painting that she had done. Not it was a collage she had done, and she had painted these, taped all these long strips of paper to the canvas. And so I said, "I'm going to do something like that." So I started yesterday, and I did this one. Can you see that around this painting? I don't know if you can see it, but I just glued a bunch of. I painted this paper, and uh, I glued it on, and put some shapes on there. I did that in about less than an hour, and um, I think it turned out pretty good. So I, I posted it on um, <clears throat> Instagram, and I, I think I said something like, I've been in the mully grub for a while because of this coronavirus. And, uh, but after talking to you yesterday and my daughter-in-law sending me an uh, inspirational song to listen to, I got inspired and did oh, I'm it. so happy. I'm so glad. So before we go into that one, because I know you're going to show us a little bit about your materials and how, what is your process. I would love for you to show us the paintings that you have on your wall and go through them and talk to us a little bit about uh, your process. If you have a thinking process or if you go through you know, each painting and um, do you cover it up and start again? What is your, what, what how do you go about it, buddy? And show us, show us Brown, um, if you can, the paintings that are on the wall up there. All right, I'm going to hold the camera for right now just so I can focus on the painting and tell you about it. Okay. This one is one that I did uh, last October. I was at a Krista Harris workshop. And the painting, I worked on it, worked on it, and the colors were real garish and not really pleasing. I just couldn't make it work. So I just took white paint and just started slapping it all over the top of it. Well, actually what I did, I, I took a piece of paper and put blobs of paint on the paper, and then I pressed the paper up against the painting and rubbed it. Is there any way that you can go closer so we can see more of the details? Yeah, it's just, and, and you know, covering it up with this uniform pattern of white, it did something to it, and I, it's one of my favorites now. Yes, it certainly did. You know, it almost gives us a language, um, a conversation of the piece, something that glues it all together, and uh, the, the composition is on point, because you do have some sort of uh, a repetition and once we know that we use a repetition uh, throughout the painting, it starts to have um, a conversation, a familiarity, a uh, definitely uh, a language that I can see. 
And um, it is very, very um, engaging to watch it. So congrats on that. That is just phenomenal. Thank you. This is another one I did at Krista Harris's workshop, which... Uh, which when Krista asked, will join us in the future. So I'm yeah. very excited about that. Well, when you asked me who, who my favorite artists are and inspiration, she's one of them. So she's fantastic. And yeah, That's this true. one is real quirky. But it's another one that I had painted and I couldn't do and make it work. So I, I don't know if you can notice, but the uh, wrapping that comes on canvases from Michaels is this uh, chartreuse green color. Yeah, that's, that's one of my favorite colors. So I, I just cut that up and glued it, glued shapes on top of this. And uh, Krista said it looked like a 1950s television. <laughs> television. That's exactly <laughs> what it looks like. You know, in a way, I feel that sometimes your art, you call it quirky, and I call it um, something that comes within a very honest place, almost like a child when you're starting to paint, and you're not really thinking, and you're just making marks. And I think that you are such an honest um, artist that you have the quality of a child which we all want that. We all strive to get there so we don't think. And, uh, and I think that you really truly have that, that uh, trade in your, in your art. Well, Sandra, thinking is not my strong point. <laughs> I'm not a good thinker. I just like to do, I like just to do it. Now this, I do a lot of things like this that are kind of I could, a little silly and quirky and uh, whimsical. But I was painting a landscape with the trees, and it was kind of dull. And so I was going through an old magazine, and it had these uh, two figures on the bottom. Right. Like Victorian, Queen Victoria. Or oh, who, my goodness. That <laughs> so I, those on there I love that. That sounds fantastic. I cut out the birds and painted them on there. So I, I do a lot of things like that. And oh. this is one that I, I like this one a lot. It's just a, this is, there's no collage on this one. This one's just paint. But I do a lot of circles and shapes and uh, triangles and squares. You know, I think that on this one, buddy, you have an arrangement of line and marks that can speak of things visible, uh, imaginary, um, even invincible, invisible. You know, you, you, you kind of have your imagination going. So um, I, I appreciate uh, all the layers that you have because you don't really have a focal point, but it makes you wander throughout the whole painting. So that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, well, Nicholas Wilton, I took his course and he, he stresses that you need to have a lot of history in your paintings. And your history, meaning things that are underneath, like you, a painting that you paint it and paint it over it, but leaving, leaving a lot of the original painting showing through. And that's what he calls the history. This is one that I did. It's, uh, I did this one at uh, Steve Amity's workshop, Time Before Last. Is and this on wood, buddy, or is it some canvas? That, now this one's on wood. And I like painting on wood because I like to see the grain and you can scratch in it a lot harder than you can on canvases, give it more texture. I think that, um, you know, when you and I have worked together on workshops, I see you um, fearless going into the wood. You are not afraid of really scratching it and getting in there and, um, and, and going all at it versus a canvas. You're more, you know, you're a little more afraid of it because you might break it. <laughs> Before I say anything about this painting, I see on the screen that my sister from Mockingbird in Valdosta is watching. And she said I needed to give her a shout out. But she sells a lot of my paintings for me. So thank you, Pam. <laughs> and, Thanks, and she, Pam, for joining us. I yeah. love seeing you. And she's also, she's also Thomas Rhett's grandmother. And Thomas Rhett endorsed us by putting a uh, tag or whatever you call it on his uh, Instagram page. Yes, I yes. So I, I actually um, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, Thomas Rhett, you're an inspiration to all of us. And um, thank you for helping your great uncle here and uh, for giving us a shout out 
we're doing great things together and I love the uh, artists helping artists. So I can't thank you enough, Thomas. So if you're watching, um, kudos to you. Thank you for helping us. Sandra, this painting, one of my favorite artists is Paul Clay. And he used, he used to make little squares and different shapes and kind of primitive looking paintings. And, and I like to do things like that. So the way I do this, this kind is when I first start, I'll just put real wet acrylic paint and let it drip down and then let it drip sideways and to make, you can see the squares in there. Yes, yes, like very it. much so. And then yes. I paint, paint in the squares in different colors. Yes. And then what I did on it, I uh, sanded it down to make it look kind of, to give it some texture. And then I drew that weird shape in the middle. But I like this one a lot. Yes, and I think that's what you are known for. You, you know, your forms and shapes are so unique. And, um, and like I said, you have this inner child that lets you, um, you know, go where we are afraid of. And um, so this is, this is incredible. This is another incredible example of what I'm just saying. This this is, one, yeah, tell this us about one, this one. This is big. It's 48 by 48. And it's, I just had a real big piece of, I paint a lot of paper, just paint on paper, just so I'll have it available when I'm getting ready to do a painting. And uh, the big blue part, I just, that was left over from something I had cut out. And I glued it on the page and it didn't have the eyes or the nose or the tongue on it. And but it the shape reminded me of one of my cow paintings that I had painted before. You know, shaped kind of like a cow, cow's head. And uh, Steve Imini came over and was talking to me about it. And I said, I'm tempted to make this into a cow or a dog. People, everybody else thinks it looks like a dog. But he said, Well, go for it. Put eyes on it. <laughs> so I put the eyes <laughs> on it and added the trunk. I, I absolutely, I absolutely love that. And I love the composition. And I love how you. Um, juxtaposition, the orange and the um, and the yellows on top of, you know, what what did you use? What is that? What is is that a piece of paper? It looks like bark almost. What the blue part? Yeah, it's just paper. But you know, when uh, A May was talking about her process the other day, yeah, she, she was talking about how she smooths it out and gets all the bubbles out and all that. And I try to, and it's real hard to do on a big piece of paper like that. It's hard to get the bubbles out. And so it this is. one had, it had bubbles all under it. So I just sanded the, sanded it. And that's what the, you can see the brown on top of the blue. Right. And then this right. part down here, the paper tore off. You can see that where I was sanding yes, it. Yes. And that's what she was saying. You know, we can, you know, it's okay. It doesn't need to be perfect. And that's part of the beauty of the beauty of this, you know, um, so what what type of um oh let me show, tell you about this one, just one one more time thing um at a steve Imony workshop a year about a year or two ago penny beasley and i were in the room together and we yeah. were on, in that room that has a back porch on it and she went out there and found this old piece of plywood that was had yes. been laying out there in the rain and it was rotten and the plywood had peeled off it's that real cheap thin plywood yeah. And so she brought it in and said, let's do something with this. So we, I glued, I, I've started using that a lot now. And these strips oh, wow. here. So that's, that's the actual veneer there. Yeah. Can you see it's plywood? Yes, yes, we can see. And it's real thin. And so you can glue it on. And it's, I've done a, a lot of abstract landscapes using this and using the plywood as the tree trunks. I absolutely love the texture and composition here. And someone just mentioned that you know, it reminds them of Paul Klee and how, you know, the freshness of it. And so um, that's a true compliment to your work. Well, thank so you. you should be very, very proud. This is very creative. Um, you know, I think that not a lot of artists approach the way you do. And um, so if you want to tell us a little bit about your, your materials, what you like to use, um, that'd be great. All right. Well, I I do a, probably at least half or three fourths of the paintings I do. I have some collage mixed in with it, and I love to use just cut out some of your. 
take rolls of the brown paper and I just lay it on the floor and paint it. Yeah. What is it? Is it just paper, buddy? Yeah, it's just brown rolls of brown paper, real. Like paper. craft paper? Well, actually, it's just brown paper you get at the paint store that painters use to lay down on the floor to keep from getting paint on the floor. Yes, yes. But, uh, you know, I paint it all different colors, and then I have it big pile. It's a total mess under my table. But when I'm painting, I'll just reach in there and grab and, and I'll cut them up like this one. And you see? Oh, yes. I tore this one so it left the brown paper on the edges and the black that I... So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna just give you a little demonstration of what I do. With Please it. do. We would love to see. Are you gonna do it on canvas or on wood? I'm doing it on canvas. On canvas. Okay. Uh, you, I like doing wood, but uh, the man that uh, has been making my wood canvases for me, when he makes real big, something started warping. Right. And I don't like that. You're doing all that work on the paint. You didn't work. <laughs> problem, problem. So, yeah, it's uh, a problem. Your 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 panels are big and heavy. So. All right. This this painting. I mean, I started this painting. Like I, I start a lot of paintings by just slapping paint on the canvas. Okay. Just to get something on there. I mean, I had yes. no I had no idea where I was going with this, and it's, you know, there's nothing to it. It's not pretty or doesn't look good, but um, I knew that I was going to put things on top of it. So I just had the idea to put this. I cut this out of my paper that I painted. I'm going to glue this on there. Do you use medium? Yeah, I use medium. What kind of medium do you use? Hold on a minute. <laughs> I love you, buddy. You're awesome. I absolutely love you. <laughs> I have to paint like I am from France because most of my people that I like are French. So he was Spanish, but he went to France. <laughs> Paul Clay, I think he was German, but he went to France too. Anyhow, <laughs> French people are more. Paint for my paint, please. Now. Let's see. I think I'm going to do it like this. I got this big piece, and I'm going to get my glue. Which is, it's called medium golden. That's what you're using. It's medium, but all it is is high class glue. Right. You are making everyone so happy right now. You don't even know. Everyone is just, you know, just loving you right now. Can you see what I am doing here? You put, yes. the, you put the glue on the candle. Then you put your paper like this, and then, then you do this. You just smooth it out. And so you, uh, you glue it and you take the extra off of it, I guess. Yeah, and I don't waste anything. I, my mother taught me not to waste anything, so I, I'll show you what I do. I do this. Put this on here. This is a big piece that's going to take a minute. But I'll put in a lot of glue, more glue than I need. Yes, I can see that. No worries right now. It's all good. So, now, Aime is probably saying, what is he doing? Because Aime is the, the, most, the best collage artist I have ever seen. And I want to be like her one day. But oh, you are your own unique, amazing artist. You don't need to be anyone else, buddy. You are incredible. So you should really um, think of yourself as an incredible artist because you are. You are an inspiration to all of us. Now, you see Look I at that. Wow. Now, the glue is wow. uh, it's not that expensive, but I don't want no, to... No, but what you just made is you just made a shape and a form and gave it a value that we didn't have before and now you have a platform to work from and um wow look at the excess <laughs> let's save that buddy let's save that because you're gonna use it later 
And now I'm going to put the other shape on here. And do this. And I don't know if this is good or not, but I'm going to find out. Okay. Put it like this. See, what you do for the uh, paint, people who want to paint but they don't know how to paint, you just paint. You just exactly. Put them in. Exactly. And you have fun while doing it, which is okay. incredible. And that's what we need right now. We need to have fun. We need to be inspiring others. We need to be creative. And you are doing all that for us today. So what a treat for us. What you can do is while you do this, you can say, coronavirus, get out of here. <laughs> and hit <laughs> Great. This is so fun. I'm having the best time and I'm learning so much as we go. So, this uh, the paper, Nicholas Wilton is very, he, he emphasizes this very much. You have to have differences. So, I have a very wide piece of paper that is circular. So, now I want a thin piece of paper. I don't know where to put it. Let's see, I'll do it like this. You see, you don't have to worry about it because you can change it. If you yes. don't want to change it, what you do is put the glue, move it down, and now you have that line. This is Look at, you already have a composition. You have a line, you have a mark, you have a conversation. This is incredible. And by doing three things, by adding three things to that, um, so for our beginners, buddy, what would you say to our beginner painters um, or artists or anyone who wants to be creative? Um, what do you think three lessons that we can, we can give them? Okay, mon chéri, you beginners, I want you to know that you have to be bold. Do not be timid. Do not be afraid. Because I want to show you one thing before I finish. Where is this painting? Well, I don't know where it is. I put it in the car. But I, wrote, I did a painting and I call it Joshua 1 9. That is a scripture from the Old Testament in the Bible. And this is very important for us today because we are, have the COVID 19 going everywhere and everybody's afraid. But this says, do not be terrified, do not be afraid, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Well, you don't have to be afraid. God is watching over us and he's gonna take care of us. I'm but into that. I paint I put things like that in my paintings because I like to do inspirational things in my paintings. I, I want my paintings to bring people happiness. Yes. Bring them joy and bring them hope. Yes. All right. So Let's keep going here. Because we're all loving it. All right. Now, where did it go? Can you should see the mess down here, but I'll show it in the mess. This is a mess. I painted the orange, the orange. But I think it's like this, but I don't like this. Because it looks like a pumpkin. And I don't want, don't want the pumpkin on my paint. In fact, you have to be careful when you paint because if you put a, a round thing here and a round thing here and something, you look like a face. Which is okay to have a face if that's what you want, but I don't want the face here. So I'm going to tear this. My beautiful pumpkin. <laughs> it's going to be teared, yep, in a little bit. So what can I put? Where do you think I should put this, Sandra? Um, I think maybe it should go on the top left corner. Up here. Or, sorry, right corner. On oh. top of, of that, yes. Well, that's where I'm going to put it. And see, this is, what, this is one very good thing about collage. If you were just doing nothing but paint, then you would paint the shape you want on here. And you, when I have the paper, I can put it around. I can see beforehand if it is right. going to look good. It's going to help the composition or not. And I think it did. So I'm going to get another little piece of orange. Do you wait, buddy, until the glue or the medium um, 
uh, dries out before you go back with your paint? Well, yeah, I'll let it dry out before I put the paint. Well, sometimes, but you know there's no rules. Right. No rules at all. If you put the paint on the glue, it will make it a different uh, texture. It might thin it out a little bit, make it more transparent. Right. I'm going to put this right here to cover up the line. And now you have a balance on color. There you go. Yeah. And then, if you want to, you can do something completely idiotic and put this color on here. This probably is what not kind of paint are you using? This is golden quinacridone magenta. So it's acrylic paint. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to like it, but no, I don't think I like it, but we'll see. I'll probably end up covering all of these up. And yeah, I, don't, I, I know you. I, I know you start with one piece and at the end of the day, we can't even see what you started with. But I'm loving to see. Are you using a, a plastic palette right there? Uh, the palette? You mean the palette knife? The palette knife. Was it a plastic one? Yes. It's plastic, yes. Oh, well, here's something I've never tried before, but I'm going to try this. Maybe not on this painting, but on the next. You see the string? Yes, I see the string. It just sounds like in the trash. Yes. <laughs> so, one day I'm going to glue it down. I think that would be very interesting. Yes, yes. I, I so agree with that. Agree with you? Oh, no. <laughs> you don't have to agree with me. I am me and you are you. You paint the painting you want to paint. I paint what I want to paint. <laughs> so uh, keep going, buddy. Well, you're entertaining us, that's for sure. You're giving us uh, food for thought. And um, at the same time, you are making us laugh so much. This is fantastic. I don't know about this. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Just try it. Just try, and then you can go back with your paint, and and, uh, and and this is all just to give inspiration and love to others. And um, for all you guys watching out there, all of my participant artists are going to be um, making a 10 by 10 piece of art. We're going to sell it as a collection. I think we're going to sell April as a collection um, and then May as a collection and as the months go by. Um, so your artists are going to be incredible. I am talking to all your private collectors. Please email me, DM me for information. Everything that we, all the money um, and all the funds, 100% of them will go to a food shelter to help people because that's what we need today. We need help, we need your money, we need your support, we need your support for artists. So thank you so much for helping us out, buddy, today. And together we're stronger than by ourselves and we will make a difference, the difference in the artist community. We will all help the food shelters um, in need right now. So, let me show you one other thing, Sandra. This is for the people who want to know how to paint. And I'm not saying I know how to paint. I'm just saying you can try anything. So I don't think I like the magenta. So I put water on it. Spray it. One yep. And then just you know, rub it. Oops. Uh-oh. Took off my piece of uh, collage. It's not to... ready because it hasn't um, had enough time to, to uh, dry the glue but you are adding a second coat with that magenta, which is beautiful. I actually like that color a lot. But the thing is, the painting will look nothing like this when it's finished. It will probably put a lot of things on top of it, but these will show through little pieces. It will add very much interest to the painting. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> painting to be boring. Who wants a boring no. painting? <laughs> Nobody wants a boring painting, no. especially from you, buddy. <laughs> you never, you never bore us. That's for sure. 
You tell me if you do, because I want to throw it away. I don't like boring paintings. So right. at some point, you're going to have to show us the shark painting, because there's a lot of people asking about the shark painting. Okay, I'll show it to you. Let me have just uh, my wonderful grandson. I'm taking the camera over me. All right, this is the, it's either a shark or a whale, whichever one you see. Let me Let's get it up here. That is so, so fabulous, fascinating. Talk, talk to us about your imagination. Where do you, where do you go inside to create something like this? This, he, if you notice closely, he has dentures and they are not a very good. Don't, do not go to this dentist. He did a terrible job on these dentures. <laughs> but this, I don't know. I, put, I, I did not plan on doing this. I tell you, it's an accident. Everything that good that comes out of me is accidental. But, I mean, I think it comes from God. I think he put it in me and I tried to let it out. So I just was making a, a abstract. If you can see the yellow dots up here. Yes, is, is, that, is that paint or is that, um, that what is that? Paint. It's paint. I was doing like pointillism, you know. Okay. I, I, okay. I thought it was like Surat or however you pronounce his name. Yes. But it was ugly, very ugly and very boring. So I glued this big oval piece of gray on top of it. Of it. Is that is that paper? That is paper. Okay. Papel in Spanish. Oh, you are you speak Spanish, don't you? Papel. Sí. Uh, yo hablo español poquito. <laughs> no, Con, contigo aprende español. Yes, absolutely, okay. absolutely. So, what what did you what what is uh, the words on that on that painting? This is the one I was telling you about. Is this the name of this painting is Joshua one nine, and it says, "Be strong and courageous, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go." And so, you can interpret this in many ways. The fish, I mean, at first I did not have the hook here. You see the hook? Yes, yes. Before I had the hook, I was saying, if you fell in the ocean like Jonah and the whale, you don't have to be afraid because, you know, God got him out of the whale. He was in there for three days and yes. he came out. Yes. Then I decided to put the hook. And now I'm telling the whale, you can be strong and courageous. You don't have to worry about the hook. Just don't bite it, you know. <laughs> use your use your brain. Whatever you want to do. Uh, no. Um, buddy, um, yeah. is there any chance that we can walk into your home and you can show us some of your paintings, in, which your home is right right around the corner? But I know that you have an incredible collection in your home. That would be very good. I will do that now. So I guess I can do this now. So all right. I'm going to go here. See, my, <clears throat> my studio is right across the breezeway from the house. And That's I, incredible. You no, know, Sandra, Sandra wants to steal this uh, cow head from me. I do. Paint. I want to paint it. But I have had it for 50 years. I was bailing hay one day, and it was in the field. So I can't give it away. It's too sentimental. And you see, we have our house is full of love. My wife put that on the door. I love it. <clears throat> Let me see. All right, this, let me turn the lights on. Can you go turn on? Yep, I can see. This is one I did, you were at this. Uh, yes, we, we were together when you did that. And that is one of my favorite, favorite paintings. It has, it's so rich. It's so beautiful. The color um, that you used here, the tape, because uh, people don't know, but the orange, Circle um, is orange tape that you ended up um, using some arrows um, to point out where your eye wants to move around. Um, you use crayons. You, um, yes, you, it's, oh, look at that. Juanita was there too because she was painting right next to you. And she uh, was afraid of the lizard in her shower. She would not take a shower because of the lizard. 
So I paint the lizard and I write Juanita by it. The name yes, of the painting yes. is Juanita and the Yak. Yes. So this was a phenomenal. Um, I think that you you really got it right on this one. I mean, on everything that you do, but this I really enjoyed seeing it transformed. Um, morning, day, and night. It was a whole different. Look at that. Look at your backyard. It is just Beautiful. incredible. Now, My this, I did not do this. I wish I had done this, but this was done by Martika Griffin. He's a very good friend of Krista yes. Harris and Audrey yes. Phillips, and she gave that to me. Let's and move to the ones in, in the living room, the ones that first, are yours. First, I want you to tell me who did this. Jane, Jane Canyon, uh, our good Jane friend Canyon. who was uh, my first courageous artist. And this is what I used to paint. I used to paint roosters. Which I love, actually. I love that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I love everything you do. Now, this painting, I've had this, I painted this three years ago, but I like it. It's very primitive, but it's just circles and color. And it looked, I think it is good. I like it. Yes. And this one, I painted this. I do not ever want to copy another artist, but there is a man named William McClure from Birmingham, Alabama, and he is a decorator. And he started painting these big paintings with just big shapes, and they're really fantastic. So I did one in his style. I did not copy it but this, this is his style. Incredible. Well, buddy, I think we should go. Oh, yeah, you have that wall, too. I forgot. Well, the, the first painting I ever did when I went to college and I took the art course to, so I could get a better grade, this was my first abstract painting. I painted in 1971 before any of you were born. <laughs> you were not even thought about <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one yes, but you already, you know what? You can already see the talent right there, right then. So okay. incredible. Another, this, I'm not finished with this one, but this is, uh, I think it has potential. It's got the, the wood pattern. The, uh, yes, yes, which I, I love how you use that because it has so much texture and possibilities. And this is, I call this a self portrait, but I was a bear. I, I hope Let's I go to know. the self portrait that I love, will you? I will, I'm going. It is, it is just on a piece of paper on the door. Here it is. That is a masterpiece. Now let me tell you how this did. Now Krista Harris is a master teacher. She told us we put the blank piece of paper on the, on the wall and then we close our eyes. We stand in front of it. Then we take our left hand and we trace our nose, our lips, our eyes, our ears, our chin. And as we are tracing, with the other hand, we have a piece of charcoal, and we go down the painting. I guess I'll... It's so intuitive, um, buddy, <laughs> and it's so incredible, that painting. Um, it is, um, you know, it, it, it really shows how it comes from your heart. Um, can you point it out again so we can see it? How do I get myself in the picture? Um, you can't. <laughs> just just point it to the painting for now. I am so, <laughs> so then we can see it. Um, you can't see we'll me. go back to your studio and um and and finish up in your studio. But um looking at this, you know, um I have said throughout this interview that your inner child is right inside of you and um your intuition and the way that you go about it is fearless. And the result is truly, truly breathtaking. So I am in awe of your talent. And actually, if we can go back to your studio and maybe have um, your last thoughts. And also, maybe Brown can play us off um, to our last uh, few minutes here. That would be fantastic if Brown's still around. I hope so. I think he is. I hope so too. I hope so too. In the South, we call our, our children like, Brown, where are you? <laughs> is he still there? Here he is. Brown, oh, you... hey, Brown. Will you do this, the honor of, um, of uh, finishing up our interview <laughs> and maybe playing a little something for us? And before you do that, buddy, I can't thank you enough. 
Um, where can we find you? Where can we find your work? Okay, I have a website. It is bodylahoodart.com. Okay, and what about Instagram? That is lahoodbuddy. Perfect, and I will have all that and this video up on my Instagram, and um, I'm, I'm hoping to do it also somewhere else, and I will let you know where it would all be, but... For now, I'm keeping everything on my Instagram. And Buddy, you are, can I see your face for a minute, Buddy, before you go? You are a true inspiration, fun, amazing guy. And I can't thank you enough. And uh, let's get it off with uh, Brown for a minute and let's hear him.